Hi and welcome to another installation video by Robox Academy. In this video we're going to do a three dome installation and we're going to show you a step-by-step -step guide on how we did this. Let's go! Now for this installation, like our previous video, we used Wi-Fi turret dome cameras. We do have a, an entire video dedicated to this on the advantages, uh, but mainly it's due to their Wi-Fi capability and the distributed storage. What that means is the camera houses an SD card, so these cameras are not going back to a central recorder. Instead, we're relying on the SD card storage and cloud storage, which these cameras um, had. The first step, as you can see, uh, was to draw a wire because although these cameras are Wi-Fi, they are still powered by a 12 volt power supply. Um, but we've used one cable to power all three of those cameras. So how we've done that is first you drill through and just behind this actual um, soffit board is a garage which had a mains power source. And that's what we're gonna use for the three uh, cameras. Now it's worthwhile noting that each installation differs and in this particular installation this house is actually particularly old and uh, we had sourced that uh, just behind the soffit board was some asbestos which is going to dictate some of the wiring things we've done uh, which you'll see in the follow-up but the first thing we done was got the cable through and then the next step was to basically as you can see um, we've drilled at one spot, which we're going to actually fill in. Um, but that was just to draw the cable through, because unfortunately we couldn't drill directly from the garage because there was no access there. And that's why we've had to drill at this height. After that, we've pulled the cable through this hole, as you can see. And that cable is going to be drawn all the way along. Now you can see what we've done here. We've actually looped the cable, which is where the first camera is going to go. And then this camp cable is going to be tacked all the way along that. We've then uh, filled the hole which we drew the cable from. Now I've just used chalk uh, filler here. To be honest with you, there are much better ways of doing this whereby you've used the same color as the cement. But anyhow, the first camera is mounted. And then the next cable, uh, as you can see here, which is dangling down at the moment, was basically tacked behind the lip of that soffit board and that brought the cable all the way through. Now, what actually happened here is the customer um, and actually ourselves, we decided that we weren't gonna fit a camera here. So even after we've run the cable and you'll find this, if you're an installer, things always change on site. So you have to be ready for that. And in this case, the idea was actually we were gonna install two more cameras on the other wing of the house. So what we had to do now is actually create a joint. Um, now both of these cables are just Cat5 cables. You can see the grey colour one, which was initially going to be used for a camera. We are now having to use that to create a joint. And how we've done that is by connecting it together with an external grade Cat5 cable. Now what is an external grade Cat5 cable? It's like a traditional Cat5 cable with ducting around it. It's a thicker coat. Um, and this is what you would normally use when the cable is exposed to outdoors. So whichever country you're in, always um, worthwhile noting Cat5 indoors and Cat5 um, external grade, um, sometimes called PPE Cat5. So what we've done here is made a joint. Now, as you can see, there was actually a better way to do this, which I'm going to explain, which is instead of having the joint at the front of the lip we could have actually done it towards the back of that soffit so we would have tacked it along the corner and then uh, done the joint from the rear of that soffit board that would have basically prevented us from having to tack this cable all the way but anyhow um, it was high enough that we didn't have to worry about that and then basically we've drawn the cable all the way across the house onto the next set of guttering and we've basically tacked the cable just behind that guttering, as you can see. And what we've done here, as you can see, there's a little hole there. And from that hole, we've basically drilled into the soffit 
and if you've not seen the previous video but uh, I've always used a coat hanger so that's always been my way of fishing cables and I've been doing this for over a decade uh, it's always worked for me um, we, we've you've drilled through pushed the cable into the soffit and then basically yanked it through using a um, a coat hanger now you can see here what we've done the reason there's two cables here is because we are going to use this for a third camera so the first camera you saw in initially but at this spot we are fitting two which gives us a total of three cameras what we've done here is basically tack the cable along as you can see that's going to eventually be filled so you don't see it and then basically you drill through and that brings us to the outside third camera whereby you can see because of the brickwork we have um, had to use a deep base so there's two options here sometimes cameras have these things called a deep base which allows you to mount the connection whereby the cat5 cable meets the connection of your camera and that gets housed in a box however not all cameras have this option they don't always have the deep base option in which case what you can do is use an ip box now we are going to have a dedicated video to ip boxes because there is a, there's always good ways and bad ways of using ip boxes but for now we've um for this particular job we had the option for a deep base which we used and then that was basically the end of the installation after we've completed the installation of those domes the final step is to go into the garage and mount the power supply so you can see here it's a 12 volt 5 amp power supply now this particular power supply is great uh, because it's actually got a voltage adjuster now i haven't shown this in the video but you will see certain power supplies have a voltage adjuster why is that useful well at longer distance you do lose voltage um, so uh, this particular run might have been anything between 20 and 30 meters so we actually use a little screwdriver to increase the voltage uh, which would have obviously increased it throughout the three cameras but it would have only increased it up to 16 volts so that gives plus or minus 10 percent which the camera allows uh, taking us to about 13.8 volts which means the very last camera would have received uh, I, I checked it, it was about 12.2 volts so which is great that means all three cameras get adequate power supply uh, now this installation was done some years back so there are always ways to improve it and if you are an installer and you've got some advice you'd like to share please put it in the comments and any comments for installers or if you're an end user fitting your own system have a um, drop us a comment or if you'd like you can drop us an email roboxacademy at gmail.com thank you very much for watching this video if you'd like to see anything specific again please leave a comment in the videos i am back to making some videos on this channel so i can always take up your requests thank you and have a lovely day